I'm Alex Polizzi and I've worked in top hotels for almost 30 years. I mean, are you actually taking the piss? That is unforgivable. What are you doing? She's got a hell of a temper. And having put my own money on the line to launch my own hotel, I know that times couldn't be tougher. Dreaming about having a Michelin star. Oh, my you know. God. I mean, no wonder you never make a penny. Every day, I just cry my eyes out. With hotels struggling across the country and the hospitality industry in crisis... You're really irritating me. OK. I want to do all I can to help. You've got no idea about what you're doing. But when times are tough, there is no room for shoddiness. You should be ashamed of yourself, honestly. From deluded owners... What is it with shit hotels and town art? To disastrous decor. Do you like that paper or...? Hate it. And downright dirtiness. Oh, for God's sake. I wouldn't want to pass a UV light over that. <laughs> I actually feel sick. I'm preparing for battle. I actually just want to walk away and wash my hands. This time... It's such a trip. I mean, what exactly? <laughs> a mixed up manor house. So, what on earth is this insane plan of yours? <laughs> I'm blaming him. Yes, please. <laughs> with owners that go rogue. I'm really cross with you. Because what I asked you to do was to be sensible. Mm. And what you've done is you've gone completely the other way. Service, please. Care Berris Manor, run by former Dubai real estate agent Omar and his wife Kim, a former PA. So I'll put a few guys over here. Come on, Kim. Oh, I can't oh. run that far. They're partners in the business with Kim's publican parents, Pete and Angie. Last time you were in the kitchen, you threw peas at something. I swore up. Worse than Gordon Ramsay in a kitchen. Yes. Oh, my God. In 2019, this family of first-time hoteliers took on the lease of the 22-bedroom hotel near the Brecon Beacons, complete with 30-seater restaurant and function room. I think Mum was expecting a 10-bed B&B by the sea somewhere, but I knew I wanted something with character and not just a run-of-the-mill, you know, coach trip hotel. Despite their inexperience in the hotel industry, the family have grand ambitions for their business. We actually were planning to be the landmark of Mid Wales. We dream about that. Ooh! Oh my God. What sort of light are you thinking of uh, getting there? I would like a little chandelier. In a bathroom? Yes. We came up with this kind of tagline of affordable luxury. Yeah. So we're essentially trying to give people a five-star experience with a three-star hotel. I'm not a chef. I like cooking. I watch YouTube videos. My dream is almost to have, like, a Michelin-star restaurant. Look at the state of that. It's all burnt. I want, like, five of these hotels. I want, like, a chain of manor houses. I'm definitely a bit of a dreamer. But with the hospitality industry suffering from record staffing shortages post-pandemic, their dreams have become a nightmare. Well, we have no chefs left. We've lost quite a few of the, the waiting on team, too. The hotel is running on a skeleton crew of just 10 employees, piling pressure on the inexperienced family. We're going to spend time together as a family. We're working all the time. It's quite hard, really hard. And with overheads of £70,000 to hit each month, the workload required to make enough money has them run ragged. Daisy, can I have two espresso, please? Double, please, yeah? For God's sake. I'm going to end up in hospital if he keeps drinking those. My 60-year-old mother is like, her back is breaking. My dad's like, I've never seen him stress. He's been like, his steam coming out of his ears. Oh, if I said we're working 24 hours a day, I wouldn't be far wrong sometimes. We are. OK. 
With only three months until millions of tourists flock to the beacons for a new summer season, they're questioning how much more they can take. I think, yeah, I could probably do another year as we were. Uh, that would drain us severely. With the family heavily invested in the business, it's essential they find a way to make it work. Everything we had in life, we saved. We just put everything But in essentially, it, so. we, we, we can't afford to fail. Yeah. Let's be realistic. We are in a big problem. I don't sleep in the night. And at some point, one of us is going to go, I'm sorry, I can't. So it's all or nothing, you know. With nowhere else to turn, the family has asked for my help. This is a reassuringly grand entrance. I love a driveway. Of course, feeling quite enthusiastic, unusually. I tell you what, I flip, flip that about 20 million times a day. There you go, that's got it. First impressions are not bad. Where's he gone? Omar! Yeah, yeah, come in. I was on espresso. I told you to wait to have an espresso. You're going to be way too hyped up, love. All right. And Pixie, you can be quiet today. <laughs> Well, it's a good-looking building. The sun is shining. It looks quite prosperous. I can't imagine what the problem is here. You're nervous. It's like waiting for a teacher to tell you off. You yeah. Know. Right. Hello. Hi. Hi. Hello. Can I'm we Alex. Alex. Nice to meet you. <laughs> Oh, my goodness. Hi. Welcome to Cabo's yes. Manor. Oh, welcome to Cabo's Manor. Thank you. <laughs> thank oh, you. How are you? Really well, thank Good. you. Do you guys have experience in this industry? I was uh, a bar manager in Hard Rock, Sharm Sheikh, and then I, I became a real estate guy. We went to Dubai together, and we've been working real estate since that day. So. So what on earth made you buy, get, a, get involved in this business, you lunatics? We, we, we were so about. silly. We wanted to come back from the UAE. We wanted to settle down and start a family. Yes, but it's also quite a big jump from never having done this to taking on the size of place and the upkeep of it. And 100%. That. This is probably why we've, we've sort of called you in. Why? We can't keep up with it. And my mum and dad are a bit older, they want to retire in a couple of years. And it's the four of us at the minute with very minimal staff. Yeah. And it's like we're, we're killing ourselves. OK. This is what it is, yeah. Can I start with going to my room? Of yes, course, you yeah. can. With 14 doubles, three singles and two suites also on offer, Kim and Omar have opted to put me in one of their three newly renovated full poster rooms. Thanks, darling. This is very pleasant. So how much do you sell this room for in the season? This one goes 115. That seems really cheap. We, we sort of got the tagline affordable luxury. God, you're a Middle bullshit artist in the making. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I love Middle it. Of the road, you you know. lunatic, I, I love like it. it. But no, but um, I don't know. I just want to be able to sell at all the rooms every night. I will just settle myself in Please. and then I'll come back and find you. Sure. Yes, Shout down if you know. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It seems my initial optimism may have been misplaced. Oh, I have to say, I'm not a fan. It's a bit twee for me. I suppose the immediate alarm bells are the fact that they want to start a family, apparently, and the parents want to retire, apparently. Mm. Ah, how's that all going to work? The more I look around, the more I'm not a huge fan of Mm, the rabbit theme is starting to get on my tits a bit. Oh, surely not rabbit mugs, too. <laughs> no, I don't like that. It's a really funny mixture of their taste overlaying a much more traditional style. 
Having a clear identity is key to a hotel's success. But what I've seen so far poses plenty of questions about what this business is all about. I'm hoping for something more coherent in the reception rooms. OK, well, this is all pretty conventional, kind of old country styly house. This, on the other hand, not so much. What a weird combo. <laughs> I mean... It's such a trip. I mean, what exa... I mean... <laughs> it's gone from confused to completely crazy, and I think the effects might be rubbing off on me. I don't want to look at the ceiling because it offends me so enormously, and I'm afraid I might go stark staring bonkers. I don't know. I don't even know how to describe what they're doing because I've never done it. Just want you to know I'm a broad-minded woman, but I draw the line at this. The off-the-wall decor is definitely a worry, so I'm hoping to hear something sensible from Mum Angie. Hi. Hello. Do you mind me coming in? No, you're welcome. How do they run this 22-bedroom building on a skeleton staff? Making a bed. I'm making this bed right now. I've just got the... Do you want a hand? And I can only do so much, cos then my back will start aching. Yeah. How do you manage, darling? Cos at 22 rooms with... But, you know, you just have to, don't you? Because... <laughs> And when you there's, say, there's no way out of it. I mean, I think the problem is that for novice hoteliers, you've taken on quite a lot of building. Have we? Well, yes. Well, don't you think? Well, that's what they said. If you take anything smaller, how will, will we make some money? Well, are you making money there's, now? Oh, I've got a clue. Oh, please, God in heaven, spare me. <laughs> I mean, honestly. <laughs> Do you no. really not know? No. I, are you I'm not, not interested, darling? No. Oh, no. I'm, I don't have but... much patience with that because, you know, this isn't a game. You know, I just understand that it's quite complicated and there's a lot of, you know, they want to start a family and you want to go and semi-retire and you've got 22 bedrooms and yeah, their stuff. Yeah, How is, is it trouble. all supposed to hang? I don't quite understand how it all hangs together. together. No, not, neither do I, to be honest. OK, I'll go find Pete. OK, then. Having a handle on the finances is vital for any hotelier. The fact that this family seems so willing to let it pass them by is a big worry. I'm already feeling grumpy and I've only been here an hour or two. It's just... They're all just dicking about, feels like, frankly. <sighs> Swearing before lunchtime. It's not a good sign. Care Bearers Manor in Mid Wales is in a mess. How do all these other hotels survive and not have like a family breaking down? We, we must be missing something. Mm. Do they have a clear direction? Do they have a clear goal? Are they all pulling in the traces together? I'm not sure. As well as dodgy decor at odds with the historic building, they have huge ambition. But coupled with a serious staff shortage, it's pushed this overworked family to the edge. Now I need to turn my attention to the numbers. Hello. Hi. And I'm hoping Dad Pete can give me the lowdown on the manor's bottom line. Did you make money last season? We did make money last season. That profit, did it go towards paying money back? Did you put it, you put it all back into the business? The profits were made last year. We've started to upgrade bedrooms. We've started to upgrade various areas. And it's all stuff that we've, we thought, well, it's going to help the business going forward. I mean, I just don't understand this business. I don't understand what it is that you're trying to achieve. Well, this is the reason I want you here. Yeah. Uh, what do we actually do? Which direction do we go? OK. That is what we're looking for. Somebody who knows what they're talking about. Okay, darling, thank okay. you. Okay. Thanks. 
One of the keys to defining this business is the food offering in the 30-seater restaurant, which is open to guests and the general public. Knock, knock, can I come in? Yes, please. With no chefs in the kitchen, it's an area that's fallen to self-taught cook Omar to oversee alone. So, darling, what do you... What kind of food do you cook? Explain to me your concept. All right, so, so basically, I'm, I'm dreaming about having a Michelin star. Oh, my you know? God. Honestly, <laughs> honestly, why not, you know? I'm trying to come with the finest quality food ever. You know? Let me see the menu, please. Of course, yeah, yeah. With less than 0.5% of UK restaurants having earned a Michelin star, achieving one as a novice chef operating alone is a pie-in-the-sky idea. OK, so let so me have a look. So, yeah. scallops, beetroot salad, what... I mean, it looks like a lovely menu. Thank you so much. But what you have to work on is the concept as a whole. Mm. The restaurant doesn't exist in a vacuum. Exactly. And yeah. so it has to attract people and make money to the same degree everything else does. And the bacilla, yeah. All right, my darling. Thank you. You're welcome. Gosh, I'm too small. My legs are too short for this chair, just saying. With prices for a main course rising as high as £32 for the fillet steak Omar is cooking for me... Oh, my heart. <laughs> my heart. I've never been nervous like that in my life. I'm not sure his dreams of fine dining actually add up when my bedroom only crossed £115. Well, I'm just doing a basic calculation. Let's say there's two people in a room, in a room like mine. So you've got your two fillet steaks at £32, so that gives you £64, right? And then let's suggest you both have a starter at £10, so that's £84. And then you both have a dessert for £8 each, that's another £16. And that's £100, that's almost what you spent on your room, on your meal, and that is not going to work. This is the biggest exam in my life, or test in my life. More concerning than the costs is the unrealistic ambition of earning a Michelin star, the ultimate culinary accolade. I'm not even going to dignify the Michelin aspirations with a comment. I mean, I'm really not. What you're trying to do is to fill the rooms and keep the guests fed now, not at some mythical time in the future when you're going to have enough staff. I'm all for dreams, but we have to base ourselves in the reality of the moment. Go. Oh, thanks. You're welcome. Oh, God, that looks very nice. Oh, that looks lovely, darling. Oh, thank you so much. You good? Tell me something. Yes, please. Did you help in the kitchen last summer? Uh, I was doing the breakfast. Yeah. I used to do with my health condition. The pacemaker battery has gone down and um, I collapsed. So I went to the hospital and my doctors sort of said, you can't be in the kitchen because all the uh, commercial ovens and things like that affected the battery life of your pacemaker. So, so, so yeah, but I have to, you know, I, we have to survive. I have to, I have to do it. Okay. Gosh, I'm worried now. Let's see how this is cooked. Perfectly cooked. Thank you very much. Oh my much. God! Thank you so much. Oh, Enjoy, you. It, please. Thank, thank you. you. Discovering Omar's heart problem is a worrying development. I'm concerned that if he continues in the kitchen, his pacemaker could potentially fail at any moment. I mean, oh God, the plot thickens. You know, I kind of feel like I need to give him a bit of tough love and say, are you actually going to be able to do this? And between Omar's heart condition and the retirement plans and the hopes for a baby. Really? It's a somewhat shocking end to the day, and one that's given me plenty of pause for thought. I think the main challenge is going to get them to face the realities of what they have here. <sighs> and stop them living in a fantasy land of unicorns where the moon is made of blue cheese, because that isn't where we are at the moment. At the end of the day, what if she does say, we'll do? That's what she's here for. On the plus side, four is definitely better than two in a situation like this, because they can support each other. Oh, why am I crying? It's so silly. I think I've just got a lot of anxiety over it. It's just been a crazy couple of years, so... It's just getting it on the right track, definitely. 
Oh, for God's sake. My first day at the manor left me with plenty to chew on overnight. <sighs> Can you give me chives, please, love? Please? Chives? Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know what a chive looks like. <laughs> All right, I'll get that. Up? I'll get that. All I right. don't know what it looks like. I know it's green. With minimal staff, a big old building to run, and a self-taught chef that shouldn't be in the kitchen, I've woken up wondering how I'm going to give this family the help they're asking for. So it's not like there's an easy solution, and I am racking my brains. I don't think I've ever felt it to be quite so challenging. My proposal is all about making this family's workload more manageable. Right, so the first and most important thing is you've got a staffing problem. Well, the whole industry has a staffing problem. And unfortunately, I don't have 10 staff under my left armpit to pull out and give to you. So, I think it's really important that you consider at least on a couple of days a week restricting bookings. Yeah. Mm. Okay. If they're to survive the summer with the skeleton staff they have, the offering has got to be achievable, especially in the restaurant where I want Omar to simplify his menu. The staffing situation is particularly acute in the kitchen. So I would suggest that what you do is you keep it very short, short the menu. Exactly. Keep it short, keep it easy. Perfect. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yeah. I have no problem at all with your dreams for the restaurant, but you've got to put them aside for this year. Perfect. Finally, I want to unify the price points in the restaurant and rooms by reducing the cost of the food and raising rates for accommodation. You have to align the food offering to the clientele and to what they're prepared to pay. Someone isn't going to spend 140 quid on a room and then 100 pounds for dinner. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? Yeah. yeah. So I would say to you, let's look at a really nice burger. Let's do things that you, that you can charge the correct price for, make a margin and still not shock the punters. Yeah. And I also think you should put up your prices a bit in the rooms. Mm. But by £10, that's an extra little cushion, which I think will sure. really help you. Mm. <laughs> this season has got to be all about making money. Mm. And still being standing at the end enough to enjoy it. Because yes. what's the point if you're all one in hospital and one having a nervous breakdown? And, <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. it makes sense, yeah. doesn't it? When you think yes. about yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah? yeah. Okay. <sighs> if I'm going to help this family make the business work for them rather than run them off their feet, we need to focus on what's realistic in the here and now. What she said is really helpful. You know, and I know it's absolutely the right thing to do. I think they all understand the argument of where I was coming from. And, and I also think they would never just pay lip service to an idea unless they really agreed with me. Little did I know that next time I returned, the family would have taken an entirely different direction. Three full poached eggs, one full scrambled, one full fried, and one full poached eggs. The Southwick family run the 22 bedroom Care Bearers Manor in Mid Wales. They all come in the same time, yeah? <laughs> Love it. It is seven weeks since my first visit in February, and the season is now in full swing. Service, please. There's little sign of respite for the overworked family. I've got some fresh white for you. Thank you Get rid of that one. OK. It's more nervous about being able to get through the summer. I'm just tired all the time. <laughs> My advice to the family could not have been clearer. Service, please. I asked Omar to simplify his menu and reduce prices. There's one guest who will have a vegetarian sausage, yeah? Oh, have you got no sausages? No. Happy days. Smile. I advise them to increase room rates to boost profits. Come on then, let's get this room done. And to help combat their staff crisis and avoid burning out from overwork, I suggested they restricted bookings two days a week. Oh, sorry. Do you want to do the corners? 
most importantly, I told them to absolutely forget about their pipe dreams of fine dining and a Michelin star. We've kind of made a big decision and we haven't made a snap decision, but we did make it very quickly. We found this amazing head chef. We're going to completely change the business. Instead of it being a 22 bedroom hotel, it will be 14 or 12 bedrooms, restaurant with rooms, and we're going to get a Michelin star. <laughs> we'll see. Yes. It's going to be awesome. Is it? We manifested this. It's it's happening. Okay. It's happening. It's going to be Kim great. Kim says it's going to be awesome. So, I'll believe her. With less than 200 UK restaurants having been awarded one or more Michelin stars, the family are aiming as high as it's possible to go in hospitality. I'm on my way back to Kerberos. It's been a while since I've seen the family. And I've heard from the team that they've had the mad idea and now they would like to go for a Michelin star in the restaurant. This extremely ambitious idea Amazing. So we just like let that warm through. All rests on the family's faith in former yacht chef and coffee salesman Jamie. Yeah, I came up to sell my coffee, and then uh, yeah, Omar offered me a job. I walked in the door um, on a Friday, and then by the Monday, I was officially the head chef, uh, signed my contract, and it was good to go. We're moving 100 miles an hour on this. Aren't it we? is 100 miles an hour. Yeah. It makes me very cross because it means that all that time I've spent thinking about solutions for them, you know, so much pie in the sky. With Omar's heart condition a real concern, I was hoping to find a way to free him from the demands of the kitchen. What you need to know about me, I'm very stubborn, and uh, if I want to achieve something, I will do it. Quite honestly, I can't remember in 14 years of being the hotel inspector, that a family have changed direction quite so dramatically in such a short space of time. So the new plan is to have testing menu. It will be about uh, 10, 12 courses, right, Chef? Yeah, 10 to 12 courses. And this is how we're going to achieve our mission star, you know? Given the challenges the family are already facing, it's a choice I'm struggling to understand. The reason I think this is a mad idea is because I know the blood, sweat and tears that goes into creating a Michelin Sard restaurant. And they were already moaning about how hard it was to run a busy hotel. I think Alex is going to be in for a surprise because obviously she left us in one way and she's coming back to something completely different. And she's got a business brain, so she must understand why we're doing what we're doing. I think they actually have no concept of, of what lies ahead. And that makes me very nervous for them. Last time I was here, I thought we had agreed on the way forward. But if the family doesn't want to take my advice, I at least need to understand what on earth they are thinking. Hello. Hello. Hi. <laughs> How are you? Good. Welcome back. Thanks, Lovely darling. Oh, I hear there's a major oh. change of direction. Yeah. Yeah. So what we're looking to do is go from the 22 bedrooms that we've got that we still can't keep up with. Because the with, staffing is still complicated. Because of the staffing, yeah. And chop it down to about 14 bedrooms and make this more of a destination dining right. location. So my initial reaction for what it's worth is shock and horror. <laughs> uh, I thought you Ab might be Absolute, because I think okay. you've got no idea about what you're doing. OK, OK. I mean, I have to be honest. Sure. I think our sort of headspace was same amount of staff that we've got now, but less work for us, more money. Do you know what I mean? I don't think it's right, though, because actually you always make more money on rooms than you ever do on food. Okay. And I think that is an absolute rule. And then you're still very dependent on 
staffing in the area where it's most difficult to get it actually, which is True. the kitchen. But it sounds like there's a lot to unpick. There is. <laughs> Why don't we go and talk to Omar? Okay, yeah, let's yeah? find him. He'll Come on. be in the kitchen, no doubt. With fine dining typically operating on low profit margins and high staff quotas, I'm struggling to understand the argument for this new vision. My patience with this family's flights of fantasy is starting to wear thin. Hi, darling. <laughs> so what on earth is this insane plan of yours? <laughs> I'm blaming him. Yes, please. <laughs> I'm hiding. You know what? It's, um, <laughs> as I told you before, um, I'm aiming to have a Michelin star, and I was looking for the right person. But has this man got a track record in Michelin? Oh, yeah, 100%. He's absolutely know what it takes, and this is the thing. It's. Uh, I don't know how he, kn he knows what it takes, darling, because I've looked at his CV, and what he has done is exactly four fucking weeks in Michelin starred restaurants. That does not a Michelin chef make. And actually, I'm cross with you. I'm really yeah. fucking cross with you. Because what I asked you to do when I left mm. was to be sensible. Mm. And what you've done is you've gone completely the other way. Mm. But what I'm saying is, what you said about the head chef... I've got nothing yeah. against yeah, him, yeah, I know. by the way. But I mean, I know. I'm sure he's a really good chef. Uh, he's, he's, he's a brilliant chef because CVs can't tell you everything. And what I'm saying is, it's a chance. And I felt it from my heart that this is... This is going to happen. Darling, this you is... Know. I know, but I thought yeah. the idea was to try and work less. I thought the idea was to try and get you out of the kitchen. Are you for, all right? For him? Yeah, I am, I am. I'm just overwhelmed trying to get across what, what it is that's in our minds. OK, so can I just be absolutely clear about how you think ultimately you want it to run? So yeah, so dinner, bed, and breakfast package for a couple starting from three fifty. So you've got your two people, twelve quarter taste, so your breakfast and your room for that price. So you are going to give this tasting menu for two right. people and a room and breakfast for three hundred and three fifty. That's for two people. I'm absolutely fascinated how you've costed this out. I mean, I really am. It probably cost me about hundred and ten pounds per. Couple. I don't believe you. Darling, if you can make 50% profit on 300 and whatever pounds, I will eat my own knickers. I mean, I actually... <laughs> Have a look for me I then. just... But I just think that you're doing this in a very naive, slightly foolish manner. Um, and... And I'm sure that it's a mistake. But when you came and I was honest with you, he asked me that, and he said to me, Omar, why are you trying to achieve us? I told you, Michelin star, from day one. But I thought you, know? you were joking. Like a Michelin star, it's like I'd yeah. say, you know, well, I don't know, I'd like to walk on the moon. It's yeah. nothing impossible, like dream, why not? If I, do, if I don't achieve it, what's the problem? Yeah. Yeah. OK. I've made my opinion clear and it seems Kim and Omar are determined to chase their dreams regardless. My initial reaction is that I just want to go and lie in a darkened room and scream into a pillow because I just think it's all quite unrealistic. As we see at the moment, the figures that we have got, it's going to make us a lot of money and for half the work, you know, so it's a no-brainer for us. I'm afraid I'm really struggling to see the vision. At Kerberis Manor in Mid Wales, the Southwick family. Good afternoon, Kerberis Manor. Has chosen to ignore all my advice. Bear with me, I shall just have a look at my calendar now. And instead, shoot for a Michelin star. I just feel a bit kind of like, I mean, you know, be deluded if you like, but don't drag me down with you. Having heard what the family had planned, I've called in old friend Barney Cunliffe, who has achieved a Michelin star at his hotel in the Lake District, the Gilpin. I don't think I'm being completely old-fashioned and stuffy and suggesting that pub tables probably won't make the grade. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Gilpin is 32 bedrooms. We've got a Michelin-starred restaurant and we've been going since 1987, run by the same family. 
He's here to help me run the numbers on the reality of the required investment. Have they got an investment, capital investment, for the restaurant? <laughs> I love you. Well, you just ever hope it's eternal, doesn't it? <laughs> this, the answer's no. Then. And enlighten the family on the challenges involved in chasing a Michelin star. At the moment, it's the hardest I've ever experienced it in my career. I'm hoping that Barney's extensive experience in high-end hospitality. Hello. Hi. Hi. Hello. How, How are you doing? Him? Well, can help me convince the family to think carefully about their dramatic change of direction. <laughs> so I have Ooh. asked Barney to come. Um, Barney Cunliffe, he runs a hotel with a Michelin starred restaurant, and I thought it'd be oh. quite good to hear from the horse's mouth what is entailed in getting there. Oh, yeah. So we, we've had to do it very gradually because we didn't have huge resources financial resources to start with. You know, there are many people who have done it very quickly, but usually they've got uh, millions of pounds that they can throw at it. Winning this ultimate culinary award typically takes big budgets and a significant number of staff, both things this family is currently lacking. Our brigade is eight minimum in the kitchen. So there's 18 chefs all together and um, they are expensive chefs. With top talent demanding six-figure salaries, overheads are enormous and profits don't necessarily follow. Barney, what kind of gross profit do you th margin do you think you make from your food from your Michelin-styled restaurant? Um, the chef will probably kill me for this, but it's none. All right? And it's full every single night. The bedrooms have a profit margin of 90%. So if you've got your bedrooms full, You've got the, 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 the turnover, you've got the cash coming in, and that can subsidise your restaurant. I mean, I, I mentioned to Alex, we've got the 22 rooms, but we can't sell them because we haven't got enough staff to turn them over. But I also think that you've paid for a 22-bedroom hotel to only use 14 rooms yeah. is crazy. I want to hear something. I want to hear something positive in the same time because all I hear is you can't do this. You, this no, is really no. that. It, no it hurt me a little bit, you know, because I, I, I bought a lot of effort and I, I believe in what I'm doing. I believe of all of us working hard. And Darling, you've had a hotel for two and a half years during COVID. Mm. Yeah, I know. I mean, I, you just don't, don't get cross because actually what we are trying to do is not always be negative. We are being realistic. It's called realism. You are very exposed. Mm. And, and if you go down the fine dining route, everything has got to be matched in parallel with that. Your bedrooms, your, yes. your reception, your, your, your grounds, everything. All that you're going to do is bring people in with high expectations and, and they're going to be, be disappointed and tear you apart on social media. Mm -hmm. and, and that is, you know, that can affect your business really badly. The only way to understand if this ambition is actually affordable... So this glass is on. Glasses on. Glasses on. Glasses on. ..is to look into the accounts. With monthly overheads of £70,000, they need a huge pot of profits to renovate the rooms to find dining standards and still pay the bills. The, the problem you've got, even with those figures, you're not making enough to invest at the moment. I think Alex and I came up with similar figures. I said 30000 Alex said 25000 a bedroom. Um, and, and that's the challenge. Her bedroom. Her bedroom. Her bedroom. Yeah. What are you putting in these bedrooms? <laughs> well, this is the, this is the market that you're going for. Right. Is expecting that. They want those rooms in that way. They want luxury. Um, but also, the point is, that takes more cash than you've currently got there, mm. in, my, in my opinion. It's clear to me that this is all too much, too soon for this business. And maybe, just maybe, the family has finally started to listen. Even if we were to say increase the amount of rooms from the 14, <laughs> we're still stuck with rooms that are going to be... There's nothing we can do. I think I've slightly put the cat amongst the pigeons. They seem to be gathered around a table at the moment, game planning. I mean, that's really what I'm here for.
come in and sit down? Am no, I wanted? Am I needed? Am yeah. I useful? Thank you. Very much so. Yes. I just want to restate to you that, um, you know, I think my job here is to make you just think more than once yes. about anything that you do. Yeah? Oh, yeah. Mm. I think you've let yourselves get a bit carried away by this fact of having this one <laughs> member of staff come. Yep. And actually, you know, a restaurant and a hotel is about more than one person. Oh, yeah. I know. I think you should really double down on, on being sure yeah. what you're getting into. That's it. Yeah. I have a big problem with you saying to me that we're just going to do a tasting menu. Mm. I mean, it just doesn't make any kind of well, sense. That, that, we're not going to be so strict on that. We're still going to cater for other guests. Honestly, mm. that's more sensible. Honestly, that's more realistic. And honestly, I think it gives you a top chance to really focus your next few months on making as much money as you can. Yeah, definitely. OK, good. A breakthrough at last. Instead of going all guns blazing by immediately introducing a 12-course tasting menu... I think what you've got to look at is really, it's going to be more of a boutique hotel rather than a Savoy. Super yeah. luxury, I yeah. Think, yeah. yeah. The family have opted to tone down their ambitions and take their time transitioning to full-on fine dining. So, I think we've kind of got to a good place at the end of today. I reckon. Yeah. We've agreed that you want to do fine dining, but it's a journey, not a destination, as they say. And I think what you have to do really consciously now is every decision you make, don't leap feet first. Really analyse, mm. because I think that way you will ultimately get to the right decision. It's such a pleasure. Makes, it makes so sense, Alex. Thank you. Alex. Oh. Thank you so when I first arrived, I found a family with big dreams, and I'm not sure that has changed. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thank you. Oh. Right. Back to work, guys. I just hope, for their own sakes, they've learnt to be more realistic about how they achieve them. <laughs> Kudos to Alex, because we did a massive 180 from her first visit to now. Yeah. And she's come in and she's sort of adjusted her guide for us and made it work with what we want to do. So it's just invaluable. I am really hopeful that the decisions they've made are going to work for them. I do wish them all the best. I got a note on my phone uh, when we achieved the mission star. And um, Alex Polizzi, she's on top of my list, <laughs> honestly. To invite her to our way to come and celebrate, that was us, you know. And I hope she accepts the invitation, you know. Alex is checking out another hotel next Thursday at 9. If you're interested in your business appearing in the next series of The Hotel Inspector, go to channel5.com slash take part for more details. It's all change at the captain's table and guests are demanding rock star hangover cures as the cruise continues brand new Sunday at 9. Next tonight, Ben Fogel, New Lion.